so awful. Hello, it is Sharon from Vivid Days. I'm doing an impromptu live, so I am not imagining I'm going to get many people uh, joining me this evening, but I thought. I would wait till very late in the day, as late as I can, and I'd start a sculpture. And then that way, if there is anybody that's got any questions about my particular processes or the products that I use, I am here to answer your questions. Well, hello, Jessica. Hello, Jellica. I've got uh, a couple of people on here, so I'll do my best to intro. It's been a long time since I've done live. I hope the view is okay for you um, and if you've got any questions ask away other than that I just felt like I was gonna work on a sculpture and this time I'm, on, I'm gonna do it just before it's time for me to go to bed really so I'll attempt to do the first stage live and I'll disappear for four hours and then I'll come back and do another stage live just in case there are any questions Good morning. Is it Minna? Have I said that right? I hope wherever you are in the world, you're safe. I hope that you've uh, found time to do a little bit of creative yourself. I'm sorry that this part may be boring while I'm just mixing up my resin. But I thought it'd be a good time to chat to whoever drops by and says hello. Hello Heidi over there in Denmark. Um, let me know where you all are based in the world. And if you do have any time, or you are inclined, a thumbs up would be really helpful for me and my channel. So what I am going to do today is work with a pigment bundle. Let me see if you can see this. This one is resin 8, so it's called Fire. So it's got yellow, magenta, amber, burgundy and red. Um, I've not used these colours before. I'm really curious to see how they're going to be, but I was really interested because of the bright, happy colours. So this... Hey Siri, stop! So this is the yellow, we also have a magenta, we have an amber, we have a burgundy and we have a red. So they are classed as a fire pigment but they actually say that they're very good high stained glass effect look, transparent. So I'm hoping that I'm going to create a nice little fiery dish. Now I'm not going to try and make it look like fire. But what I am going to try and do is layer some clear in between it all. And I am using this paper, which is the window film, which is the one that I showed in one of my uh, videos. It's the one that's got the holographic that will come off onto your sculpture. So I'm going to try that a little get again, <laughs> should I say. And then a couple of people have asked me what I've used in previous videos. So I thought I may as well get these out for you and show you as well, because... The most common questions I get asked. So this is a basically it's on a roll. Uh, it's like what florists would use, but it's not necessarily. And I got it from Amazon, and it's just called cellophane iridescent wrap. And it comes in a roll. You can cut it to the size you want, and it is beautiful for doing sculptures on. It really works really well. Let me have a little here. Good morning from California, USA. <laughs> the land of more cows and people. I love that one. Hello, Caroline. Uh, good morning from Northern uh, Ontario, Canada. Hello. Got all over the world on here at the minute. I love that. Anyway, so this is really flimsy, but it holds the resin beautiful and it comes away from the resin probably the best. It comes away a lot better than this because this has got a texture and a pattern into it. It clings to it, so it's a little bit more sensitive, but you get it on a roll, you can cut it to any size you want, you can use it over and over, but it is very fragile. On my other sculptures, I get asked a lot about this one. So this one is from a company called Paper Purchase, but I got it from Amazon. It's basically a very high shine, thick gift wrapping paper. But again, your resin will come across away from that beautifully. And because it's such a high shine... It leaves that nice little glossy look on there. So all I would do is ever you're looking to do a sculpture and you're unsure, do a little patch test, patch test, cut a little bit off, leave it on overnight, see how it peels away, and you'll find some amazing results. 
has anybody got any questions on the paper or would like to share what it is that they um, use when they're doing any sculptures? I'd love to know. So I'm just making sure my resin is mixed and then it's just going to be stood for a little bit because that is another hot tip when it comes to sculptures. For me personally, I wait until it's almost ready to start curing before I put it down onto your substrate. The reason being, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be too runny and you're gonna have a little bit more control over your shape and where it's going. You could always put your little silicone um, around it to try and protect the areas or to try and create a more specific shape. I just really love a very fluid one. I just like it to go wherever it wants to go and then me just work with it. And another, ingredients I'll add is the Colour Cottage Super Sparkle White. The reason I really like this one is that the glitter on it graduates throughout the resin and it doesn't just all go to the bottom or anything like that. Oh, got 32 people watching. Very proud of that. Thank you everybody. I feel very humbled. Has anybody got any questions when it comes to sculptors or any sort of information they'd like from me? There are so many wonderful artists out there that are creating sculptures and within the um, group that we've created on Facebook, there's a lot of people that's had the confidence to have a go. And I think you'll be surprised how easy they are when you get over your fear and just work with it. Good morning, Gina. Um, yeah, so you just gotta, Feel the fear and do it anyway. Now I've only mixed up 400 mils of resin. I'm not gonna do the triple layers today. We're just gonna do two layers. I'm gonna do a big one here, a medium one here. I've got my pint glasses underneath the table ready to go. And I'm just gonna go for a um, round base. So bear with me while I just start distributing my resin into cups. Um, the reason I want to just distribute it into cups is just so that I can make sure for my own peace of mind I'm going to retain enough clear because I've realized for me what I really enjoy is seeing the clear at the top as it goes into these um, crystal table scatterings. Now these are again from Amazon. They are um, about £9 but you get a really big bag of them. And I just love, you're probably not going to be able to see here, but they have a beautiful diamond-like cut. And if you can keep some clear resin towards those at the top, it just makes the edges look more like they're real glass to me, in my opinion. So what is the sculpture for, Heidi? It is just a, like a piece of art. Now you could use them as a vase, you could use them as candles, which is, um, not candles, but candle holders. So um, the, the, the one I'm going to attempt to look for today is a stained glass effect. So you can use them for bow just bowls around the house. You could use them to put things in. You could use them just as um, a, you know, just a, a focus point or you can uh, sculpture them so you can fit a nice candle in the middle of them, depending on what look you're going for. Transparent, solid, flowy uh, that you can use them for so many things so i think once you have the confidence to have a little go at doing it you can your imagination is your limit basically freestyle any advice when you're doing freestyle i just think think about the size of your area preparation is key so i've made sure that this is level here the box that my neil made for me and uh, um, I've got a big enough area, this sheet here, so if I pour in the middle and it starts to go in, off in all different directions, that I am going to still have enough on here and it's not going to go onto the paper, otherwise it won't release it. And I like to have a little bit of spare just in case. And if you do notice it uh, coming over the edge, it's actually not a big deal because you just get some lollipop sticks and build a little dam at the side of it and, and go for it. So I would just say, Work with colours, work with a feeling, be free spirited and just work with your resin. That would be my tip. Uh, and hello to Kim in central New York. Um, you just turn the heat on in your room so that you can resin this afternoon. Yeah, it's a little bit cold this way, but just uh, good enough for us to still resin here. The good thing about laying this weight is uh, the bubbles are coming up. Now, 
when you talked about the temperature, uh, Kim, it's a really good point for everybody to be aware of when it comes to sculptures. There is no textbook on the length of time to wait or create with these. So this brand that I'm using here is the very last of my Mastercast, but I did order some uh, uh, stone count countertop ones, believe it or not. It cost me a fortune to get it over from America, but I've got some. And so I will have to relearn how that particular resin is going to work with this and how long to wait when sculpting. So you just work with a few things, keep touching it, making sure that you can tell it's not setting uh, rapidly. But when you do start to feel it warm up, uh, start to look at putting it down on your substrate. And then depending on whether you're going to be adding your pigments afterwards, like I use the resin dyes and drop them in, um, it holds its shape a lot better so you can sculpt your design a little bit more. The more fluid it is, the more less control you're going to have. So all I'm doing at the minute is just waiting um, until it starts to heat up, uh, letting the bubbles come up and I'm going to get my cups ready with the colours in because this time I'm going to add the colour in, mixed in the resin rather than afterwards. Uh, yeah, hi, you've just got to give it a go. Be willing to have a go and if i do miss any commentary in here i do apologize i'll try and get back and if anybody's got uh, where did i get my beads from these ones are from amazon i just put wedding table scatterings uh, and they'll come up and you'll get different different um selections i prefer clear although i have got a big selection over there of different colors i just find when i add certain colors that it can either devalue or add to your sculpture but I, really, I found some iridescent ones of these and they're really beautiful and I do like the way that they can bleed into, some of the colours can bleed into your crystals. Anyway, I'm going to start dividing my cups up now and because I've not worked with these pigments before, I'm going to open them up uh, and get a feel uh, for what they're going to be like. But I am going to remember to add my Super Sparkle White, I'm just going to put some fresh gloves on. Hi Donna, welcome, lovely to see you. So the Super Sparkle White, you can just add as much as you want. It's not going to uh, change the colour of my resin. I'm going to add about this much I think. And just sprinkle it in. Uh, and the reason I enjoy this in my sculptures, it, it is optional, a lot of what I'm saying is optional, you'll go with what you enjoy, is that when it's on a window, or somewhere else that glitter just comes through and you get this beautiful little shimmer so it just adds I think a little bit of depth to it all uh, Gina hello new to resin started last year what is the best resin to buy I bought Rockstar and it's okay but sometimes it's soft wow I think Gina if you ask that question to multiple different people you get a different answer and I think your geo, your area, um, may offer different ones than you can get here. So what I would say is have a little look at any groups of people that live in your areas and ask them what they use. For me, a safe brand over here has been Elikem, which is Mastercast 121. Um, I enjoy that because it's a medium um, body to it, so you can sculpt uh, really well with it in my opinion very low flat uh, odor uh, doesn't yellow as much as others I mean all resin will yellow over time but it's got UV resistant so it's a good one to start with but it can be quite pricey uh, and I'm just about to try a new one in the UK which is Booba so I would look at your local area look at your groups look at your safety information I would normally be wearing a mask and I would recommend that you wear a mask but for this because uh, I'm engaging with you I'm not um, and have a little look which responds to you well. Have a little play around, work on tiny little pieces, see what reactions you get, smell, uh, headaches, anything like that, and then see how it works with the pigments that you like to use. Would be something that I would uh, recommend as well. Uh, when mixing two parts, do you measure by volume? Well, me, I just do it by... Um, <laughs> um, 200 mils and 200 mils, so it's by volume, isn't it? I measure it in here. I, <laughs> I'm a very simple girl. I really struggle. I don't struggle. I like it when it's simple, like 50% part A, 50% part B. Um, I do, with a lot of the heat resistance one, it's two to one. 
Um, I have bought myself some scales, but I tend to do it by um, volume, I would say, rather than weight. Uh, but I, I keep trying, trying lots of different things. I'm still learning resin. Um, I, I don't think anybody, well, there are people that are matter experts. I think it's as artists or craft people, you push it to the limits. Um, still not warming up, so I've still got plenty of time on here. But I think it's just whatever brand you use, stick to whatever the manufacturers say. I know they do build in a, a margin of error with your resin, but try and stick as close to it as possible. Ah, oh, Donna, you've had Vuba. I've not tried it yet, so I'm really looking forward to trying that. Uh, I've been told that there's a couple of different types. Uh, I've got to crack open that. I think it's a streamlined stream. I, I don't know. I've not used it yet. But uh, I've had other people say that they've had uh, a good um, experience when using it. Uh, Gina, you're right. As long as you mix it correct. Uh, I mean it's the same brand of you, different product weight, volume. All right, you chat amongst yourself, keep asking questions along the way. I'm now gonna, I hope this is still in view for you, I'm now gonna start popping open my transparent pigments from resin A, and this is where you might hear me go, ooh, ah, it's like a kid in a candy store when you see things for the first time. Um, you're trying to understand the colors, how thick it is, uh, how much to add, Wow, that's a beautiful deep red. Now, normally when it comes to, like, you need very little when it comes to pigment paste, but I'm just gonna add two little scoops. Not that there's gonna be a huge volume of resin in there. So that was the red. I don't know if you can see, but it was very, very deep blood red. <laughs> when I add my resin, I'll show you what that looks like. Burgundy. I love a good burgundy. Normally, only ever see a really good burgundy when it comes to oil paints. So, oh, that looks lush. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Very rich colours. Super excited to see what these are going to be like. And it's always a balance for me when you're trying to get a stained glass effect. You want that colour to be there, but you want it transparent enough. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that yet properly until I add the resin into it. I apologise, the, the sculpting part, the first stage, is a lot of waiting around. It's a lot of your preparation, but this is the most critical part. Um, the rest of it is just a little bit of fun going with it. Oh, that's nice. So this is the uh, amber. Just making sure it's not going to drip on my beads. A little bit more. domino effect and then I'll be able to work out if I need to add any more less is more hello hey Claire that's really nice of you to say thank you oh Cornwall yay <laughs> it's lovely to get some fellow UK people on here uh, really appreciate it I've got quite a lot of supporters over in America Canada and Australia and very little in the UK so it's nice to be getting people to log in and if you've got any questions let me know how is it down in Cornwall at the minute it's a little bit of a hair on that I think that's mine just let me clean that off if you're new to resin as well um, although I've got paper cups here um, the waste can be great so it is about thinking about how what you can reuse over and over again see if I can get this color in shot for you so this is very similar this is the magenta so it looks fairly similar to the burgundy but I'll be curious when we add uh, the pigments what is that like all right and then finally the yellow now the yellow I find it the the hardest color to get a really nice yellow when it comes to pigments for resin am i using pigment yes i am so what i'm using is resinate transparent pigments yellow for the people that were here before sorry if i repeat but it'd just be nice to engage with people this one's called resinate and i bought a bundle set so i when i'm at night worst thing i can do laid in bed just before i go to sleep and i think 
have a look what's on Amazon to see what will inspire me. And then I saw these, they'd done a little uh, sample of these when they'd cured in little domes. I'm like, oh, that's going to be lovely for a beach scene. I want to do like a sunset ocean. And then I thought, oh, that might be good for a sculpture as well. So um, the thing with a uh, proper pigment paste, they can seem more expensive than other pigments, but they are worth it. But that does look like a lovely yellow, very happy colour. All right, now I think I'm ready to start spreading my, um, oh, oh, domino effect. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right, Sharon, think about what you're doing for a little bit. You don't want any more. Let me just give that a little wipe. Once I get the weight of the resin in here it's going to help. So I am just going to distribute evenly to start with and then I'm going to try and keep some clear back and do sort of a mismatch maybe rainbow-ish effect. This is where if I had my needle doing a little bit of uh, the old commentary for you chatting away, keep you amused. Might have to get him back on the books, eh, and get Neil up here. Alright. Sorry, this... I'd say it'll get a little bit more interesting soon. So, hang in there. Alright, I'll keep a bit of clear back. And I'm just going to mix these in now. Uh, somebody shared a hot tip uh, when it comes to working with the resin before you put your gloves on because I've started to get eczema now from working with resin. I try that's why I've got this the sleeves um, taped up to try and keep my clothing covering my skin. Um, but calamine lotion, put calamine lotion on your skin before you put your gloves on uh, it will help re reduce any sort of allergic reaction to resin. All right, so this is the amber. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, that is yummy. Let me do that. Oh, look at that. I mean, this is where I get lost in it, it yeah. You could put that in a coaster and it would look like amber. That is exactly what the name is and that's gonna be lush. Love it. Right, let's do the yellow. It was a really gorgeous colour, wasn't it? Uh, hello, Clara. That's really nice of you to be here, my lovely. All right. Um, so this one is the yellow. So again, it's a beautiful pigment, but I'm going to add more because I don't know if you can see, but this is what I really struggle with. The yellow looks beautiful. But then when you actually add it to resin, it disappears on me. It like doesn't hold the vibrancy, but that could be me not adding enough. So I'm going to try and add just a little bit more. And I think this is where you have to um, be willing to mix it up a little bit. Because even though you're using the same brand, different pigment qualities have different strengths or tones or weights. So you might need to add a little bit more until you're happy with uh, what you've got. So the colour's still the same, I don't think that's going to change. I mean, it is beautiful, it's like lemon curd. I don't know if you have lemon curd your way, but that is lovely. Oh, Clara, I love watching your channels as well. Channel, not channels. <laughs> I meant your videos. So this one... I believe must be, it's got to be the burgundy rather than the magenta, we should have kept them separate, so quite transparent but it has got a nice, it's like gummy bears, 
I'll just decide whether I want to add any more to that. But I'm going to wait to see the tones of the other ends before I make that decision. So this has got to be... Nah, that must be the burgundy. And this is the magenta. This is what happens when I don't have somebody watching where I'm up to. I watched um, Erica from Artist Till Death. I'm sure that you all... Um, know of those amazing artists in that channel she had a lovely ocean um i say sunset piece so if you've not been on there have a little look they probably are the most experienced i know when it comes to resin uh, but i was very inspired by bold colors this morning when i woke up but yeah look at that magenta lovely and also we have Clara here, so if you've not been over to Clara's channel, pop over and take a little look. Some great information and lots of different content in there for you to have a little look at. Alright, so this, I'm really confused. Do you reckon this is the red then? I should have named them. That's got to be the red. That's got to be the magenta. And then this has got to be... The burgundy, but those three colours look exactly the same. Maybe when I get them down, um, I'll be able to tell a difference. I should have wrote the name of the pigments on there. I mean, they are three slightly different colours, but I think I might get lost between. Uh, I don't think three of the same colours might not be good, but we'll see. Still beautiful. You can still see that uh, Colour Cottage Super Sparkle White coming through which is amazing so I think we're ready to start pouring I'll just check before I do I just want it to set a little bit and get rid of some more air bubbles and I, I'm winging it I don't really have a set plan I know the colours I want to work with I know how I'm going to do it roughly uh, but more often than not I like to keep you on your toes and I'll mix it up uh, and we'll just go with it so we're just waiting for more air bubbles to come to the top I don't want to heat it up to get rid of them because that'll drastically reduce the working time especially because I'm pushing it to the edge before I put my resin down you do have to hold your nerve a little bit more normally I would have my um, Siri timer going but I don't think you'd all appreciate that going off um, my stir sticks where did I get them from well depending on where you are um, if you were to go to um, artists till death's channel they have a very similar thing but they probably have better because they have I think they have like small medium and large ones and they are basically um, the ones I'm doing they're like a perspex you can get them from Amazon and they're a stirring stick and you can use them over and over again but they're quite thin I think the ones on Artist Till Death's um, page where they sell them they've got different widths and sizes so depending on what you're mixing it'll be helpful for your cost as you saw because these were long they kept tipping up my cups so it's just something for you to be mindful of i'm constantly looking for things if it wasn't for how far it was away um a lot of great things are over in america but you just have to pay so much um i want to say tax but that's the wrong word um anyway let's get on with this uh Clara, have you, can you, are you able to put your channel link in here? A few people have been asking or are you able to measure the, me, message them so they can uh, come your way and say hello? Um, any more questions before I get on with a little bit of this pouring? I'm just going to work out what colour I want to do them in. Alright. Yeah, Amazon's got quite a few things. Um, if you, they're starting to even get really good things like polishing kits and um, like stuff to clump together. So I can't remember what colour this one is now. I really can't. So I always start in the centre. Oh, look at that! I don't know if you're going to be able to see that here. But I'm going to. Um, And I'm just going to keep working with it until I have done as much as I can do and then maybe I may have some left and then I've got some coasters to stand by that's a hot tip for you all is 
keep coasters nearby. If you can see there really you might not be able to see from the candle and camera angle because it's um this way but your resin is going to keep spreading now i'm just trying to see how much it's going to keep spreading because it's still not warm in here and i don't want it to be too fluid that it's going to stretch too thin so i'm just going to work slowly to try and slow it down and i'm just going to put a little bit of clear in between every couple of colors no reason why I've not done it before, I'm just going with my intuition which is to just try and have some colours blend together and some not and maybe it'll create its own natural effects. I'm a messy worker as well, you probably don't normally see that in my videos. It's like a um, highway to the danger zone. have you ever had problems with your sculptures crack uh, yes I've got a couple of videos so and the only reason I'm stopping doing this is because it's still quite fluid so I can uh, slow it down to talk to you all so there's a video that still makes me giggle where I show you how I got into a sticky sticky mess and I um, I got stuck to everything I almost nearly took my sculpture in the bin can't remember what number it is but it's one of my oceans one with a sand churning um, and then the really big one that I worked on recently at Christmas the blue one you see it snap uh, because I was adding gems on the inside with UV resin and I just wasn't paying enough attention it was the biggest one I've worked on and it cracked but you know what UV resin stuck it back together good job it was just for me uh, the most disappointing thing was um, because they can be quite fragile as I've had two that got sent to America for a client and unfortunately uh, the post by the time it got through the post there were cracks so I made another one for them and the second one cracked but I've sent them to America I've sent them to Canada and I've never had that issue it was just this one particular area so I don't know whether they've got very aggressive postal men um, but it is something for you to take into consideration if you're going to make these to sell them um, they are beautiful and they're popular and I think the they, they deserve a home in somebody's house but uh, packing and sending them away they do take up a lot of space uh, and you need big boxes and that's going to push the cost of shipping up have you ever had any problems with it? oh that's it I think this is going to be a love a love of colour I think every second um, row of colour so if you've not done a sculpture before you should be aware that your time frame of when you first start working on it starts from the minute you mix your part A and part B together I'm going to get brave soon and add more just seeing how it's reacting and where we are but I want to keep some clear for the gems at the end uh, so really uh, that's the amount of time that you're waiting before you come back and do the next stage of your sculpting so um, if this was 20 minutes that we've been doing this it's three hours and <laughs> You know what I mean? I can't think. Three hours left. Looks like you guys are all people, should I say folks, are all chatting nicely amongst yourself while I keep doing this, but you know what? I'm in love with these colours. This pigment set, oh lovely. And they're starting to um mingle in with each other, which is lovely. And I'm not going for a perfect round bowl or anything like that. I'm just following the shape that it's naturally going and then building on it. And the reason I like to do that is because I think it adds to a more organic 
um, sculpture that you're going to do at the end. Okay. This is where if we're on normal video I would just fast forward it for you but we can't do that when we're real life can we? nearly out of resamba definitely I'm going to do some coasters with this amber maybe some jewelry find myself a dead fly around the house and stick it in and pretend it's actually uh, a <laughs> mosquito <laughs> oh, I do crack myself up sometime hello Cheryl hello Stacy are you lining the resin on window film? Yes, I am. I'll show you. I'll, any, anybody that asks questions, I'll keep showing you. It's this one here. Oh, wrong one. That's what I'm using today. And it does add a rainbow effect. But when you're adding these colours, I'm not too sure whether you actually need any more. But it should add a, a nice little value to when you are looking underneath or top. So one will have the bold colour. And then the other one's going to have a nice little prism effect coming through. The clear is just to help give me some natural effects. Um, I might come in and do my little swirls. Still got quite a bit of resin going so I'm going to start um, adding bulkier things. The good thing is though I'm not adding any more pigments at the end like I normally do with resin dye. It's all in the resin so as long as the resin gets down I think that's the red one it has to be the red but then again I can still see that pink tone coming through some people like just one layer for a resin sculpture some people like two three have fun make it your own I am working on some mini sun catchers or sun charms behind the scenes so I'm seeing how I can uh, push it with the sculptures to do that uh, but there's a balance between them being too thin uh, but when you hang them in the window there's a nice little prism effect coming from them so a video should be coming up next week on that so hopefully you'll find that'll add value all right I'm out of that color so I'm just adding a few little swirls around just to add a little bit of interest and maybe different tones very nice. Hello Jack. Yeah, the colour, you can't unfortunately see these, but I am recording it as well above head. So I will do a video um, with more instructions or a, which are, or should I say it'd be a more condensed version for people that didn't get a chance to watch the live. Uh, and it'll probably add the other bits that I'm going to do for stage one, stage two and stage three because there's three stages. This is stage one. Stage two will be coming back in four to five hours when it's no longer leaving anything on your finger but you still need it to be soft just not gooey so that you can then hang it and start sculpting it and then leave it for another little bit of time um, if you want while it fully hires but the next stage is the exciting one it's where you get to start to put your personality on twist it shape it a little bit more it's uh it's all just about having fun oh wow thank you so much Mina <laughs> you're my first person to ever do that <laughs> you've just made my day thank you Oh, oh, shucks. All right, I'm trying to move my messy things out of the way. All right, where are we going with this, Sharon? I feel that I want to go a little bit more with this colour. We're nearly at the, um, towards the end of the first stage. So I've just got a few more colours to lay out. I'm going to get my heat gun and get rid of excess bubbles. 
and then work out if I'm just going to leave it to organically intermingle or if I'm going to put my stick in there and swirl it around. And then I'm going to add my crystals. I call them crystals, but they're really just uh, table scatterings. Uh, and then look for any dust particles. Oh, hello. Hello, right, cup of tea. Oh, see, he's brought me a cup of tea. How lovely is my Neil? Neil? Mm -hmm. You alright? Thank you. Alright, <laughs> so we've only got two more colours to put down. So I'm quite loving this effect. I think it's going to be a very happy piece that's spreading some positivity into a world. So what's going on in my mind at the minute is I'm mindful that this is probably getting to the edge of where it wants to be by the time I've added my table scatterings. And so what I'm going to do now probably is put most of the colours in. Oh my word, Jamie, put some more in there. That is so brilliant. Oh, Zeus, you go out of here while I'm doing this. Sorry, Zeus is coming. I'm just going to get him out of the room so that he's not smelling the fumes. Hey, Zeus, come on, out. Go on. Go, 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 go. Thank you. All right, so I'm now going to put the rest of what I've got left here. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is just put some more clear around this one and then just let this set a little bit while I focus on the other end because that was meant to be the bigger one, but this is sort of seems to be going away. All right, so a little bit more amber and then a little bit of the magenta. So when they're down, I genuinely can see the magenta. I can see the burgundy, but I can't quite distinguish the red. Uh, I don't know if it's just me or what that's about. So it's getting really tacky now. So you can see the length of time it's taking for this to roll out now. I'm just gonna get my little heat gun in there to try and help me apologize this may hurt your ears loud noise from your way just to get it to come out the cup a little bit faster thank you so much thank you so much so much midnight for popping by i hope you have a good day thank you for your support being here very little of that amber left. I think the amber is my favourite colour. I think I'm going through an orange face now. Orange and amber. Alright. Alright, final colour going down. And then, gems, heat and tidy up and answer any questions but at the same time I'm looking at this area and making sure that it's not coming over here too much. Apologies if you've been chatting away while um, I'm doing this part, I've not been able to look but hopefully you're all answering each other's questions and keeping yourselves amused and I am sincerely grateful for each and every one of you that has taken time to come to my live because this was a very impromptu live. It's got to be six or seven months since I did one. Um, so, yeah, I'm just a very happy lady at the minute. Uh, Clara, I don't know if you're still on here or you've gone, but I did my first tumbler and I salute people that know how to do tumblers uh, but I never give up I like a challenge I'm determined to do a few of the first things and uh, yeah you get to see my fails you get to see the tears uh, and I nearly took it away at one point but I keep with it and then I, I've actually got it on my desk at the side of me now just proud that I stuck with it and lots of learns for having a go again <laughs> All right, we're just done with clear now. See, it's creating a nice organic shape and pattern itself there. It's moving nicely. I just don't want it to stretch out too thin so that um, it's gonna risk, as somebody mentioned, cracking, which is not what you want. 
All right, so it's clear just going around the edge here. And that's just going to absorb the crystals, which are going to create a little damp. Some people like to use the silicone guns to almost create a little um, damp with it. Um, it's not something I choose to do, but I might have a go at doing to see if it does have any value. I think it's just worth you always experimenting. There are amazing artists out there that share their wisdom and tips with you. So it's worth sort of popping over and checking as many out as possible and then working out what works well for you. So this is really really like liquor uh, treacle at the minute. All right, I'm going to take my gloves off because they're as sticky as now. Maybe put a fresh pair on and then we're going to get rid of these bubbles. And I'm just contemplating there if I need to put some sticks because I seem to be getting a run off this way. With the best one in the world with resin, you can try your hardest to level that surface, but if it is not level, it is going to cause you problems and it's going to keep moving. So I just have some of these handy and I literally I'm just going to pop it. Get rid of that. To sort of lift the paper up a little bit to force it back that way. And I'm mindful that's creeping this way a little bit as well. I just want to make sure that's not going to happen. Apologies for the noise. I'll be in and out of it pretty quick. Just trying to get rid of the excess bubbles. Keep it moving all the time. Especially because you don't want to um, ruin this paper as well. And because this window film does have that backing, you can see quite a few bubbles still. All right, some of the sh uh, shifting color here, it's beautiful. This is where I definitely would recommend that you are wearing a mask. I would always wear a mask at this stage. Uh, again, just for the purpose of this video and being able to talk to you. With the flame, it's important that it's not really touching your resin. If you are using alcohol inks instead of resin dyed pigments, again, they are highly flammable, so be careful in that area. And I'm just gonna hope that these bubbles are gonna naturally come Come out I'm just going to let them rest for a little bit and I'm now going to put my crystals so at this stage the reason I put the crystals on the end here is because your bubbles are still coming up it's firming up so it's moving less so the resin is less likely to roll over it so it will it will keep moving try and not get your fingers into the resin but what I do is put it around the edge and then just shove it in. And the resin is still gonna keep bleeding over it, but at least this way you can then start to assess. Do you need to put a thicker layer on? Have you got the right amount? So I usually put more than what is needed. And then at the end, when it's time to go into the next stage, they just um, come away nicely and then you can pick them up and reuse them. Uh, it can be a little bit fiddly, I always think this is the nice part. It's like, uh, um, I don't know, you're towards the end of a big project and you're giving it all those finishing touches that just sort of make it pop. Um, if you add these too early, they're just gonna get lost in the resin and you're not gonna get necessarily the glass edge look, which is what I want in my case. It's just gonna be more part of the resin. I hope that makes sense. I'm not very good with words sometimes. In my head it makes sense until I hear it coming out. So where in the world do you get your table gems from? Because that's probably something that I think is worth sharing with people if you've got any hot tips of where you get them from because they can be quite expensive and it's something that you do have to build into your price if you're going to be selling them. Um, it's all the little things like this that can cost you Quite a bit money. I'm just going to stuck my finger in there, get those out, of the spread a little bit. So I've gone through it once, and I'm just going to make sure how the resin is reacting to it to see how much it's still moving, and then do I need to add any more to it? And I'll come to this side here. I'm still a little concerned with this edge here, so I'm going to add something to raise that up. Uh, 
What tent did I use my heat on there? My heat was on um, 360 uh, degrees. Oh, oh, did, uh, did I miss something? Oh, Clara, oh my god, are you... I, am, I am like nearly crying with these three donations that I've had. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> you can hear like the freaking tears of like gratitude and joy and oh, you're all the best. <laughs> For something that was so impromptu and wasn't going to have a go because people that's been on um, um, creating their own channels know that there are so many beautiful people out there and artists but then you get so many people that just want to be negative and last year was a little tough year where I, I considered is it worth it and then I had a big pep talk from lots of people who enjoy my art and channel and then that was enough to keep me going and then I had the biggest growth I've had last year which was 20,000 I know it's only 40,000 in total but for me a really 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 good year when it come to the love and support from people and and then now it's just making my time thank you oh see this is the downside of letting your resin touch your gloves I've now got blinged up gloves, so I'm just going to take that off. I don't want it going into anywhere it shouldn't be. And always watching my resin to see if there's any gaps or if there's not going to be any problems. Now this particular one here, there wasn't a lot of uh, clear on the edge compared to the other end. So the colours are most likely going to bleed around the edge. And that, it does actually give a nice effect. The last one that I did, the, um, I want to say the rainbow one, it's called the prism one with colour. You can see a little gap there, so I've got to be careful with that. I might just see if I've got any resin to just fill that gap. Right, so because that's flowing back now, which is what I wanted it to do, this edge will be quite thin. So I'm just going to shove some of my uh, gems there. Now, has anybody got any questions or anything? Hey, Tori from Canada. Dollarama. Ooh, Dollarama sounds nice. We don't get one of those. Yay, Julie on your first sculpture. <laughs> Any time anybody feels like not doing a sculpture and they're nearly giving up, go and watch my video. I can't remember the number on it. <laughs> it's the one where you get to see me getting a sticky mess. And if I could keep going through all of that, you all could keep going. All right, sorry. I just wanted to, I guess, spoon to make it a bit easy to grab it. So it's not going to... Oh, I've just dropped one in there. It's no big deal, we can get that out, fish it out. And then once I've got a fairly good jam around it, what I then do is look at where I need to push the gems into the resin to help push it back. And again, don't stress, most about 50% of these gems will come away uh, so that I can reuse them. Um, so we're not doing any wastage. And you might not want to do it this way, I just find this process works for me with getting that really nice edging and, and not having any thin pieces. So that all I'm doing now is just letting, pushing it in so that I my resin's not getting too thin at the end. Glad I stuck those uh, lollipop sticks there because that's right on the edge. Right on the edge of where it could tolerate. All right, so while that settles down a little bit now, I'm going to come back to this side and I can see that there's bubbles, a few airs I've got to pick out. The runoff of my resin isn't too bad, so it's more or less settling there. I'm just going to add a little bit more here because 50% of those went under. And that's really, um, that's really it, really. For this stage and then I'm going to set my alarm for, I'm going to do it for four hours from now, which will put me near bedtime, not quite, 
And then if it allows me, because I've never done two live streams in a day, I don't know if it will, I'll show you what I do when it gets to four hours. Um, and I'll basically come up, do my touch test, make sure that my hands are clear. Uh, and then that way I know it's time for us to um, actually start sculpting, which is exciting. Hello from Bonnie Lake, Washington. Oh, Jack, that's really good that you've, uh, Jack Cat 20 that you've managed to sell. It's so nice when you sell something. I've only really put things on my Etsy store the last part of this year and I'm going to start uploading my back catalog because my artistic skills normally are oil paintings, charcoals, um, acrylics, things like that and it's only been really the last couple of years I've explored resin and got addicted um, but I am going to try and start mixing it up and adding a few more things in here but I'm going to try and get my back catalogue so the only thing that's worrying me is this one hair here it's a very long one and these bubbles and then this is basically going to be good to weigh. Now, while I've been like doing the edges, I've also been looking about, am I happy with this or do I want to do a few swirls? Well, I think I might just add a few swirls. Um, but, oh, there's a little gap there. Sorry, I can see a little hole where there's a... That's no good. Just filling in my gaps. Alright, so. Alright, that all looks good. So there's no point getting rid of my bubbles until I've done my swirl. So, best thing, these nice little skewers that you can get, the kebab skewers. And um, if you're using these for moulds, I would, because of the sharp edge. But as far as for this, because it's already got a pattern. Uh, be as organic as you want. You may choose to leave it exactly like this. I'm just going to come in and do a few little, um, I don't even say swirls, but just to try and get a little bit of um, some natural blendings happening. Dragging it through into the clear. And then I'll go the opposite way. And it just adds, in my opinion, when it sort of all settles down and starts bleeding into each other. An interesting pattern, especially for a sculpture when you um, have got it all twisted anyway. Some beautiful effects there. And again, this is optional, but it's just showing you uh, the different things you can do. I like how that's bled in there a few times, so I'm just going to force a few, try and replicate a few of those. And then, same at the other side. So I'll bring, I'll try and bring my camera around. Um, I might tell you to look the other way while I do it, so I don't give you motion sickness. Uh, but I'll bring it in uh, closer so you can sort of look at the effects I'm doing here, or maybe see these colours a little bit better. But it definitely does. I mean, the set for these colours was called Fire, and I could definitely. Uh, definitely relate to that with the colours. All right, all right, just watch your ears if you're sensitive to loud noises. I'm just going to put my heat gun on again over the top, not to try and force it anyway, but just to try and help with some of these bubbles. Uh, so that's just going on now. with our lesson today. Uh, get that air out. 
and then I'm going to bring you around and then there's an opportunity if anybody wants to ask any more questions that's been late to the party before um, we wrap this one up and then come back in a little bit of time me assuming that you're going to be here with me all right let's have a little look they are called uh, table scatterings Gina uh, thank you Jekyll for hanging out and your support uh, amazing support thank you very much all right are you ready for me to take you around and see these colors I'll try and do it as um Oops. hello Worcester all right so we're gonna go into the little uh, the big one to the left of me here and I'm gonna slowly take you down so this is what I'm referring to with a dam. You might not be able to see it, but 50% of that has got resin into it now. So I just want to make sure that the resin doesn't come past that. And, and so I might add some more there, but I'll take you down so you can see these colours. And I think you have to agree. So there's still some air bubbles there, which I'll just address them. But look at those shades of colours and those effects with them just bleeding into each other organically I think it's stunning and it'll continue to bleed and uh, move into that clear at the edge and it'll be interesting to see what that's going to look like but I think this is going to make a blooming lovely sculpture because you can still see through quite a lot so that's number one and then we're going across now to number two this one didn't have as much clear around the edge but this is where it's to the max uh, with the resin look at that there such a warmth color and that's the effect you can get when it bleeds into it which is quite nice that's what happened on my other one and just by adding that little bit of movement coming through here I think that's where it adds that interest so I'm just going to check for air bubbles again make sure there's no um, hairs in it like there's one there I can see and then we'll come back in four hours so if you're around I'd love to see you again if not don't worry there will be a video on this so you can see the end result this is the aftermath of my workstation area but I just want to say a sincere thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's meant the world to me that I've had so many people watching and the donations are just amazing. So wherever you are in the world, be safe. Watch out and set your timer for four hours because we might be back and doing the next stage. And I will wait for a couple of minutes. I'll put this back up while I'm looking for air bubbles and... Um, yeah, dust, uh, just to see if there's any questions before I say bye-bye. So, I will just come back and have a little look at that. Does anybody else have any questions or anything they'd like to know before I sign off this uh, live session? <laughs> Heidi, I'm glad that you found Clara. Please make sure if you haven't already, go over and show Clara some love. She's got an amazing channel, very diverse, uh, lovely, lovely lady. Uh, but pop over there and share your love. But I'm going to say love you all. Thank you so much. Peace. And oh, Marie, you missed it. <laughs> go back and watch it, sis. I'll be back in four hours for the next stage. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Have an amazing Saturday evening or Saturday day and I will see you uh, on the next one and I hope that I that you'll enjoy the end result. Anyway, I am Sharon and I'm digressing and I've only said it once and that's just now. So <laughs> I am getting rid of the addiction of saying that. Uh, yeah, anyway, bye bye.